So okay. we're just Can getting uh, Valeria so set up. Who will be? You can um, use that. Who will uh, be so talking about the uh, increasing impact? Yeah. Sorry, talking about the increasing right. impact of noise in Canada's Arctic. Hi, everybody. So I'm here today to um, tell you about two related projects that are part of the Vancouver Aquarium Marine Mammal uh, Research Program. Um, the first uh, project uh, is the second season of uh, Cunningham Inlet Study. This is uh, one uh, of the, uh, uh, it's an extremely pristine uh, area where a portion of the eastern high Arctic Baffin Bay uh, beluga population summers um, and uh, it's, it's essentially a nursery area that has not yet been affected by the increased uh, noise that is brought about by, by the increased accessibility to Arctic areas. And so it is really an ideal area to provide a baseline against to which uh, compare the effects of noise on communication and behavior. And the focus has been on critical contact calls because we understand these calls based on previous studies and because of their biological importance, their group, uh, calls that are served, that uh, essentially they're group cohesion calls and they are essential for mother calf uh, acoustic contact. Um, that's what they sound like. So you can really pick them out of the species chatter. They're very different than the rest of the Weasley and chirp, Chirpy Beluga repertoire. And they are characterized by being very broadband with lots of energy uh, throughout the, the um, range up to 125 uh, kilohertz, so very broadband. Um, this is the aerial view of uh, the inlet. That circle is where my research tower was. I spent a lot of time on this uh, tower that you access at low tide. And if you're lucky, you can uh, get out of the tower before eight hours go by. And uh, you can see the sheer amount of whales that surrounds the tower, and this makes it really difficult to tell who you are recording. So you can get great general data uh, when you uh, make observa uh, recordings and observations from the tower, but it is very hard to um, make any inferences about group composition and calling rate. But I had a great natural experiment going on both uh, seasons of the study. You can see in the red, red uh, circle, uh, some whales uh, get essentially uh, leave the herd and become entrapped or isolated for up to four hours at a time in river canals. And these groups, um, when the, the tide is low, essentially the, the sandbars around the canals act as a sound barrier. So there's no doubt that you're recording that particular group, which is a great uh, thing because then you have uniform variables across all the, the isolation events. You've got the same hydrophone depth every time same distance to the whales, same situation, and same uh, behavior. Um, and there's two other things that made uh, these isolation events really valuable. One of them is that when the whales are entrapped, they pretty much um, produce uh, contact calls. A lot of the time, 70% of their calls um, are, are contact calls. And so this facilitates the study of contact call rate in relation to group composition and contact call uh, parameters. Um, an example. It's very, um, I wish you could hear better. No? Okay. So you can get an idea, basically. It's a really, really uh, neat recording. I wish it was a little louder. Um, but yes, the whales produce contact calls when they are in these situations. This was uh, filmed with a GoPro at the top of a very, very long pole. The, the other um, great thing about these isolation events um, was that we could estimate uh, group composition very accurately because uh, I was able to borrow footage from a documentary uh, film crew um, that, that um, recorded, filmed essentially um, all but two of these events. So those two, I got group composition with the, the rig and the, the GoPro on top of the pole, and the rest of them, uh, I was able to count the whales, which when you have a group of 38 whales and you want to know how many neonates, how many yearlings, how many juveniles, and how many adults you got, to do it at eye level is very difficult. To do it from the air is very easy. Um, so I had 14 isolation events. Roughly half of them, six to be exact, had neonates in them. This is just very preliminary data, but what is exciting about this is that um, those um, 
group isolation events that had neonates in them are the ones that have these very low frequency contact calls uh, where most of the frequency, um, the peak frequency essentially is below 10 kilohertz. Again, uh, you know, not, not very loud recordings, but uh, calves do sound, or groups with calves, you encounter these, these calls that are very different than, than those that you encounter in groups that only have adults in them. And this is important because these uh, calf calls can potentially uh, get more easily masked by anthropogenic noise, especially vessel noise. This, by the way, this finding really confirms uh, findings from previous studies at the aquarium that calves produce these kind of lower frequency uh, calls. And so taking this knowledge to the St. Lawrence where the population is endangered and there's an unexplained calf mortality in recent years, and one of the, uh, the prevalent hypotheses is that this calf mortality uh, increase has to do with an increase in premature separation. So the question is, is mother calf acoustic contact being compromised by underwater noise? Are, are vessels masking the very low frequency, harder to hear calls of uh, calves? So I spent uh, two weeks in uh, 2015, uh, this, this year essentially, establishing viable sampling protocols to uh, develop a study to test this idea. Um, and so figuring out how to target group with groups with calves along the river, how to record contact calls in very, under various uh, levels of noise, and how to estimate um, group composition accurately uh, with a drone and, and keep track of mother calf uh, distances. And this will hopefully take place uh, next year. So lots of people to thank, um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Do we have a question or two for Valeria?